Congratulations. I love the evangelicals. They are so good. I'm leading with the evangelicals everywhere. Because, because they want competent people. They want somebody that's going to finally, they are so tired of listening to these dead, boring, do nothing, all talk, no action politicians. They can't do it anymore. Jerry Falwell Jr. has been one of the endorsers. He's been great. He's been so great. Sarah Palin has been a great endorser. She's been a great endorser. But Jerry, and she's, she's a terrific person, by the way. Jerry Falwell Jr., Liberty University, they have done such a job. And he said two things that I really loved. First of all, everybody goes through, everybody knows Jerry. Highly, highly respected. Every candidate, automatically, they go through Liberty. And you know what they built there is a college and university is incredible. But Jerry Falwell Jr., he said, Donald Trump most reminds me of my father, which was a great compliment because I knew of his father. I knew him a little bit, but he was terrific. But he said, my father had to make a decision. And he had Jimmy Carter, who was a person that read the Bible, knew the Bible, taught Sunday school. And he had Ronald Reagan, who actually wasn't quite as good in terms of the Bible, but he felt he was going to be a much better leader. And he took a lot of heat because he went and endorsed Ronald Reagan instead of Jimmy Carter. And Ronald Reagan turned out to be a great president. And I just think it's a great story. So I just wanted to thank, because... Uh, I'll tell you, Jerry Jr. has been amazing. He's been on the phone, he's been doing interviews, and he's had a, thank you, thank you folks. And he's just had a great, he's had a great impact on the success that we've had. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn things around. What we're going to do is we're going to turn trade. What we're going to do is the following. I'm telling you about Carrier. It's not presidential. I will call Carrier. I can get, and by the way, just so you understand, we have the greatest business minds in the world. We don't use them. We use political hacks. Political hacks. Oftentimes they get there because of contributions to these candidates. We have political hacks negotiating the biggest deals in the world. These trade deals are the biggest deals. No company has deals like this. So we are going to use, and I know them all. I know the good ones, the bad ones, the overrated ones, the ones you never heard of that are better than all of them. Carl Icahn just endorsed me, a great business leader. I have others endorsing me all the time. We have a, by the way, I'm becoming, I hate to say it, I'm becoming mainstream. All these people are now endorsing me. I'll tell you. But I, but I do love, I, I, let me tell you. When I get Jeff Sessions, that means a lot to me. That means a lot. That means a lot. That's a big one. Especially since he never, he's never done it before. He's never, ever wanted to do it, but he sees this. So I would say to Carrier, look, I want to do it myself. I'm going to want to. I know it's not presidential. These characters in the back, they're going to say, Donald Trump would call up as the president, Carrier. You know what? I'll do it. I'll do it quietly. I'll say here. They'll say, oh, the president of the United States is on the phone, right? And I'll say, listen, Mr. So-and-so, here's the story. I hope you enjoy your plant. I know it's going to be beautiful. I love the fact that you're going to put a lot of Mexicans to work. I think it's a wonderful thing. But, you know, you hurt a lot of people in the United States, and you're closing up plants, and it's costing us a lot of money, and I know you're going to sell those air conditioners back in the United States. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. And enjoy it. You're going to make air conditioners in Mexico. Every single time you sell an air conditioner in the United States, you're going to pay a 35% tax. Every single time. And by the way, I hate to tell you this, I would say the exact same thing to Ford, and I would say the exact same thing to Nabisco, and I'd say the same thing to every damn company that wants to leave our country. And again, folks, I'm a free trader, but we can't have it. We can't have it. We're losing our country. We're losing our business. You know, Caterpillar Tractor, take a look at what's happening with them. Komatsu, Japan, cuts the, their currency, cuts the hell out of the yen, right? They devalue their currency. It's like their masters at it. China's the all-time great chess master with what to do to currency. What they do to us, and by the way, TPP, the trade deal, Trans-Pacific Partnership, a horrible deal for our country. A horrible deal. 
And one of the things I love is that Jeff Sessions is totally opposed to it. This is a horrible deal for our country. This is more jobs lost, more money lost. We're not going to do it. So I hope they don't approve it. And I don't know if they're going to or not. It's going to be a disaster. It's another disaster. It's another Iran deal. It's every single deal we do is bad. We're going to change it, that every single deal we do is going to be phenomenal for us. It's going to bring back jobs. So, so here's the story. So I'm going to say you're going to pay a 35% tax, and I really hope you enjoy your stay. I hope you enjoy your new building in Mexico. I really hope it works out well. I will be called by special interests, and I will be called by the lawyers and all of the lobbyists and all of these bloodsuckers that get... Uh, you know, the lightweight senator that I have on my right and the lying senator that I have on my left. And it gets these people, he's a liar too, he's maybe a bigger liar, which is interesting. But, but I, will get, I will get these people and they will say to me the following. These people won't, they won't do anything because by the time, and you know what, these are not stupid people. What they're going to do is say, oh, that's right, that's right. But by the time they start thinking about it, they will be contacted by their lobbyists. You know, in Washington, you have lobbyists that go to certain people. It's like they have a sign on their head. I'll take care of Rubio. I have Rubio. I have Ted Cruz. And these guys have such power, such power over our Senate. That's why we make all these bad deals. A lot of times you think we're making bad deals. A lot of times you think... The people that run it are so stupid. They're not stupid. They know it's bad. But they do it because they get essentially paid a fortune in campaign contributions and probably other things, honestly, that we don't know about, okay? Probably other things. I don't want to be accusing anybody. I would never want to accuse anybody of that, of course. But they probably get things that you don't want to know about, although I'd like to know about it. Okay. So I will tell him, no, no, you're going to pay 35%. A couple of people will call me. They haven't given me anything. Again. I, I'm, I don't want their money, right? They haven't given me anything. So I say, no, no, you have to go. Within 24 hours, I will get a call from either one of their representatives or the head guy, probably the head guy, and he'll say, Mr. President, we've decided to stay in the United States, okay? It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Now, now, let me just tell you something. That is not 80% sure or 90%. That's 100%. It's a hundred percent. We're not talking about, we're talking about, we're talking about a hundred percent. It's not like, oh gee, maybe we can get lucky. We can make such incredible deals, our military. We protect the world. We spend more money on military than other countries, many, many countries put together. We spend more than any country has ever spent times 10. One of the reasons is we're protecting everybody else. It's not for us. We protect Germany. We protect Japan. With Japan, if we get attacked, they don't have to do anything. They can watch it and say, wow, that's really exciting to watch. If they get attacked, we have to go and protect them and probably end up in World War III. What kind of deals are these? What kind of deals? So, Japan. We protect Japan. We protect South Korea. I have buildings in South Korea. I like South Korea. But we don't have the money to do it anymore. We... What is that? Oh. Uh-oh. It's ISIS, get him down. Oh, I'd shoot that guy down so fast, your head would spin. Uh, what do you think General MacArthur would do? What do you think General George Patton would do with ISIS, huh? Hey, how long do you think ISIS would have been around, right? With General George Patton, who's, who was a rough, tough guy. You don't get rougher, but his people loved him. They'd do anything for him, and they'd die for him. We don't have that today. Today we have generals that go on television and say, well, you know, ISIS is very tough, it's very hard. Believe me, we have the right people, we have the right minds, we have the great military. It, it is seriously, by the way, it is seriously depleted. General Oriano, when he left, again, he goes on television. People shouldn't do this. He goes on television and he says our military is the most depleted of any time that he's ever seen or heard of. That might mean like from like the beginning. Now, honestly, he's a good man, but he shouldn't say that. Why should we tell the enemy that? That's what we're doing. We're going to build it up. I'm going to build it up fast. By the way, it's the cheapest thing we can do. Nobody's going to mess with us, folks. It's the cheapest thing we can do. I don't want to use it. I don't want to use it, but it's the cheapest thing we can do. So, 
We are going to buy and we are going to get all of these countries that are making a fortune. South Korea is making a fortune. Germany is making a fortune. Japan with the cars, millions of cars, we send them practically nothing. These deals are no good. They're going to come up and they're going to pay and they're going to pay for protection and we want to be very nice and you know what? We'll have a better relationship with them than we do now. We don't even have a good relationship. China is building a military fortress in the South China Sea. They did not go through the environmental impact process. Do we agree? I don't think, I don't think they're worried about the snails and the fish and the snakes. They build. You know what they do? They say on Tuesday morning we want to build there. They start around two, two hours later. With us to do that, it would take 45 years of environmental impact studies. Oh, this country, this country. Obama, he's always talking about the carbon footprint. He has a news conference. He talks about the carbon footprint. Then he takes Air Force One, an old 747 with engines that spew it, right? And he flies to Hawaii. And he plays golf and he's there for almost like three weeks. This guy plays more golf than the people on the PGA Tour, I'm telling you. More. So, we're going to get our jobs back, folks. We're going to get our jobs back. We're going to take care of our military. We're going to do such an incredible job. We're going to take care of our vets. Our vets are treated so badly. The illegal immigrants, in many cases, and I'm serious about this, are treated better than our vets, and they get more than our vets, and we're not going to let that happen anymore. We're not letting it happen. So we're going to make unbelievable trade deals, and we're going to become a rich nation again. You know, recently a woman came up to you, a very nice woman, beautiful woman. She said, Mr. Trump, I don't like one thing you say. I love you as president. I think you're going to be great. But please don't say we're going to become a rich nation again. It doesn't sound good. I said, no, it sounds so great. Because we can't become great unless we're going to become rich again. We can't become great if we're losing $500 billion a year to China and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars to every other country. We don't make good deals anymore. So here's the deal. I don't want your money. I don't want anything. You, don't, you know, other guys come up, please send money to such and such an address. Even if I don't want any money, I don't need any money, I want you to do one thing. On Tuesday, this is our movement. This is our movement. Happy birthday. It's his birthday. It's his birthday. You believe this? I love you. Can you hear me over there? I love you people. I love you. I love you people. Man, is that a lot of people. I love, I love you people. Don't kid yourself, folks, I have to say. Listen to this. So, everybody thinks that you have the best location, right? They do, you know why? Tomorrow morning they're going to become famous and only they can only see the back of your head. They're all going to be famous. So look, here's the story. No money, I don't want money. But on Tuesday, you have to get out and vote. And we have to win big. We have to win big. I love Alabama. I do love your football team. How good is that team? How good? How good? Yeah. I love champs. And I love champs. And, and I don't know your coach. But I tell you what, and I don't know, maybe he's endorsing somebody else. I don't care. You got a hell of a coach. The job he's done here, right? I mean, no fair. He's done a hell of a job. But I love the team. I love watching that team. So professional. So, are you ready? You got to get out.